checked. So we wanted to, I wanted Robert to sing this song. It's coming up on his uh, stepdad's anniversary in about a month, isn't it? Yep. And uh, I remember Robert, this is a song he sang at his funeral. And I wanted to, him to sing that this morning. Yeah, that, that opened up the door for me to sing all the time. Yeah, Amen. so Pastor, are you singing now? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He was very shy. He said, I can't sing. He said, he didn't think he could sing. And I said, no, I just keep going. And he, he learned this song, and, and the Lord's really blessed him with it. Amen. So uh, I'm going to back him up. All right. Let's do it. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see And I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace When he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be What a day a glorious day that will be. Amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. You enjoy that? Say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Robert. Amen. And uh, grab your Bibles this morning. Amen. And uh, go with me this morning uh, to the book of Second Kings. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get there. Second amen. Kings. And that is in the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, not too often do you find where pastors get into the Old Testament. But God gave me a message this last week on Tuesday as I was in there studying. And I was looking at the story of Naaman. Naaman got leprosy. And, uh, and as I was reading this, now I've read this multiple times in my Christian life. And I've read this in my, in my pastorate life. But there was a few things that stuck out to me about this story. And I want to draw those to your attention this morning. And Lord willing, I'll be a blessing to you. 2 Kings chapter 5. And I'm going to look at verses 1 through verse number 14. But I'm going to park for a minute. Uh, and, and as we get towards verse number 14, and I want to show you a great truth out of the Word of God. If you found your place, say amen. amen. The Bible said, Now Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Now again, when the Bible says a great man, that's not just talking about his greatness, how, how he wonderful he was or whatever. The Bible referencing his size. Amen. The Bible said he was a great man. He was a great man of stature is what that is referencing to. And it goes on to say, and he was also a mighty man in valor. But he was, what's it, what's it say, church? 
a leper. Now, the Bible, when it references a leper, a leper or leprosy is a type of sinner or sin in the Scriptures. Now, Naaman was a great man. He was a man of valor. He was a great man of great stature. Amen. And he was a captain. The Bible said he was a man of authority. But he had a problem. And that problem was that he was a leper. He was a sinner. He had some issues in his life. Let's go on to verse number 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and, had, and, and, bought a, and brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And the Bible says, And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet. Now, the Bible, my Lord, that's referencing um, Naaman. By with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. They said, hey, I know a preacher. And, my, and, 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 and if, if Naaman would go unto this prophet, I know Naaman will be healed of his leprosy. That's what the Bible saying here in verse number 3. Verse number 4, And one went in and told the Lord Naaman, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land of Israel. The king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a, a, a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when the letter is come unto thee, behold, I will therewith send Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter. Look here. He, the Bible said he rent his clothes, which means he was angry. And, and, and he said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and sin how he seeketh a quarrel against me. He was literally saying, What's he got against me? Who does he think that I am? Is what the king of Israel is saying. Verse number 8. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha, the prophet of Israel. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And look here in verse 11. But Naaman was wroth. That's, that means he was angry. All right. He did not like what he was being told to do. He was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and will stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over to the place, and recover the leper. And not Abina and, and Fapar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the rivers of Israel, may I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then would he have, have to thee wash and be clean? He said, Hey, if the prophet said, Hey, do this wonderful great thing, you'd do it, wouldn't you? But the prophet told you to do something that you're not quite agreeing with. And look here in verse number 14. Then went he down... And dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the sayings of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of the little child, and he was clean. But I want to draw your attention to verse number 11. And here's what I want to show you in, this, in the, uh, the, uh, the, the message I have for you this morning. The Bible says again in verse number 11, But Naaman was wroth. Naaman was angry. Naaman, Naaman thought, and here's, here's what I want to draw out. He thought. And if we're not careful in our life, sometimes we can think too much. Amen? 
And I want you to draw attention to yourself. How many of you here this morning or here within earshot, how many of you have said at one point in your life, well, I thought it was going to go this way. Well, well, I don't quite agree with that because I thought it was A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. And Naaman was in that same position. Naaman was angry. Naaman went to the, to the prophet's house and Naaman thought the prophet was going to come out to him and was going to touch him and serve him and do what he thought the prophet was supposed to do to him. But he thought wrong, didn't he? The prophet sent out the servant and said, Hey, go tell him to dip himself in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman said, Hey, there's other rivers that are greater. Why can I not go to these other rivers that are much greater than this little river Jordan? How many's ever been to the river Jordan? Hey, look, it ain't the mighty Mississippi, right? It's not the Nile. It's a small body of, of flowing water that doesn't seem to be very significant. And he said, go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. He was angry. He was right. He said, but I thought. And here's what I want to draw out to you this morning. You see, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl secretly in their own hearts and their own eyes thought on eternity. Maybe here this morning you thought on eternity. And thinking you know it all and will always end, and listen, it will always end in destruction. You may have thought at one point, and you think maybe this morning you knew it all. And you may be thinking this morning as you're listening to the preacher, listen, I don't believe what he said because I think it's this way. Well, Naaman was in the same position, wasn't he? The destruction of your own belief and your own stubbornness, you'll find because you thought. You see, Naaman thought he knew it all and how God's plan should be to fit His agenda. And sad to say, there are still folks today, they think they know more than what God says. So what can we learn from Naaman's life? I want to show you three things this morning. I want you to really, really think about this. Maybe in your own heart this morning, you say, well, I'm, I think it's this way. Well, I think we have to do this, this, and this to get to heaven. I think we have to do certain things in order to have a relationship with God. You see, Naaman thought the same thing. And he thought to himself, surely it can't be that simple. Folks, I'm going to declare to you this morning that the plan of salvation is simple. You see, Elisha gave instructions to a mighty man of valor, a man of great stature, a man that was the captain of the host. And he said, now go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. And Naaman thought, it couldn't be that easy. Surely, I have to go to the mighty Mississippi. Well, surely of all the rivers in the world, hey, everybody knows the Nile River. And he thought to himself, in Damascus, there are two rivers that are much greater than these two. And Elisha says, nope, seven times in the River Jordan. Maybe you're here this morning and you thought. A couple things or three things I want to show you here. Number one, you see, he thought his sin would go so far. Again, the Bible said that he was a leper. The Bible said that Naaman was a sinner. And maybe you're here today and you thought, well, uh, my sin will only take me so far. Maybe you're here today and you thought, it will never get so far. I have control of my own sins. Maybe you're here today thinking that. And again, he was a captain of the host, the king of Syria. He was a great man with his master and honorable. Because of him, the Bible said, had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Again, leprosy in the Bible is always a type and a picture of sin in the center. Naaman had a problem with sin. And the problem is, it showed. You know what the difference is between you and I? I've gotten real good about hiding my problems. 
And let me tell you the problem with a lot of Christians today in, in churches today, uh, self-sanctimonial believers, is they've gotten really good about hiding their sin. But Naaman, in all of his mightiness, he had a problem. His sin began to show. His sin began to be revealed. And it affected him. You see, he thought, maybe he thought in his own mind, in his own heart, listen, I have control of this. I know what I'm doing. I know how to handle it. Don't worry about me. I can do it. A mighty man. But I'm going to tell you this morning, sin will take you further than you want to go. And it'll cost you more than you want to pay. And it will keep you longer than you want to stay. I got this preacher. Don't worry about it. I can handle it. Well, preacher, don't you know, we can do those things as long as we do them in moderation. Tell that to a drunkard. Tell that to an alcoholic. Tell that to one who was, who's uh, uh, hooked on crack cocaine. Methamphetamine. You tell that to one of those. Hey, listen, you can control it as long as you do it in moderation. Nope. Because it'll take you further than you want to go. You see, Naaman thought he had control of that. Naaman thought, listen, he thought his sin would go so far. You see, here's, here's three things about sin. I'm not going to lie to you. Sin's desirable. That's a fact. Sin, listen, is desirable. The Bible says stolen waters are sweet and the bread eaten in, in secret is pleasant. Sinful pleasures are attractive because they are forbidden. Listen, folks, they are attractive. Hey, listen, it's fun to sin. It's enjoyable to sin. There's great pleasure in it. No doubt about that. It's that sense of rebellion, isn't it? Who I'm doing? I'm doing something illegal. I'm doing something against God. I'm doing something against my mama. I'm doing something against my, my daddy. I'm doing something in secret. It's desiring. Again, Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It lures men and many deceptive ways. Let me tell you something. Sin, I said it'll take you further than you want to go. Sin is desiring. Sin, you get so far into sin, you're like, that's getting old. So you go further. And you get that feeling back. You get that desire back. You get that pleasure back. And then after a while, <clears throat> so you go a little further. And then you get that feeling back. But you thought you could handle it. But sin is deceptive. You see, for we ourselves, the Bible says, also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Listen, it's desirable, but it's deceiving. I can handle it, preacher. No, you can't. It deceives you. What's the Bible say, Roger, about the heart? It'll deceive you. You know, you, know who to, you know who the easiest person to lie to? I'm going to tell you. Yourself. I mean, hey, 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 Hitler said if you tell a lie long enough, people will believe it. Hey, listen, you could tell yourself a lie long enough, you'd believe your own lie. I mean, you go, preacher, I, I swear, preacher, I swear. I've heard, I swear, preacher, I swear. And you're like, I already know the truth. But you think you believe it. It's deceiving. It's desiring. Number three, the sin is destructive. Listen to me. Here's a warning. The Bible said, Fear them which kill the body. Fear them not which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The ultimate end is eternal destruction. You say, Name and thought. Sin would only take him so far. Number two, name and thought. Another person would be able to save him. 
Look what it says in verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when the letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. He thought another person would save him. You see, the problem today amongst Christianity is we think we have to go to another person for salvation. We think we have to go to another person to have redemption and forgiveness and sanctification from our sins. You see, Naaman thought. See, he didn't seek the man of God, did he? See, the maiden said, hey, I know a prophet. Hey, I know a man of God. He'll help you. And what did they do? They went to the king. You see, he didn't, he didn't go after the prophet. He didn't seek the prophet. He didn't seek the man of God. He sought help from the king. If we're not careful, we'll go to our government. Come on now. Instead of going to God. We were talking about in Sunday school class, COVID-19. How many of y'all remember that? I mean, that was three years ago. Four years ago now. And we look back and we think of the craziness. And what was the first place to close? What was it, church? The churches. Now, I don't know about your state that you live in or where you live or whatever, but here in the state of Virginia, their liquor store stayed open to the point they can now deliver. The governor said, it's essential. How many remember that word, essential? You became an essential worker and non-essential worker. And guess what happened to the churches? They fled. They trusted the government. They relied on the king. They said, well, let's just wait till Tuesday, right? And see what the governor says. I tell you, church, four years ago, almost four years ago, I turned the TV off when it came to the news. I was tired of them lying to me. Every Tuesday come around, well, pastor, didn't you hear what the governor said? You can't have more than 10 people in the church. And I said, the Bible said not to serve the governor. I'll pay my taxes. I'll render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Yes, I will. But the Bible said, obey them that have the rule over thee. Why? Because they watch over your soul. The government's not doing that. You see, Naaman, he thought, I'll just go to the government. But he was wrong, wasn't he? He wasn't seeking the man of God. You see, he was seeking the wrong person. The Lord said in John 5, verse 43, I am come in the Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his name, him will ye will receive. Listen, they're not, they weren't receiving the Lord. They were seeking another man. Hey, he was seeking the wrong person. Number two, he was seeking the wrong plan. The Bible said, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye. And here we are today. We would rather follow the tradition of man. We would rather follow the ways of the government than to listen to the Word of God. He went to the wrong person. He was seeking the wrong plan. Not only that, he was seeking the wrong power. Bible said, God hath spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that the power belongeth unto God. Here we found during COVID-19, the church became non-essential. More suicide rates that, that had increased during that time. Depression increased. Spousal abuse increased. Homicide increased. Domestic dispute and violence increased. And they said the house of prayer is non essential. They'd rather you go to the liquor store and get drunk. You know another place that never closed? 
to CBD stores. Yeah. Those vape shops. I mean, neon sign. Boo, boo, open. There's so many of them. But they're sitting around the churches. Police are guarding the, the, the parking lot of the churches, not allowing people to go to church. Arresting and fining pastors for holding church service. You see the problem with Naaman, number, two, number one, he didn't think it would take him that far. Number two, he thought that he'd go to another person. Number three, he thought he could do it his way. Let's go back to verse 11. But the Bible said, But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his... You see that? Who's God? His God. His God. It wasn't Naaman's God. See, the problem is today, we think we're going to do it our way. We think, well, if I just call on the priest, he'll call on the name of his God, and I'll be fine. But we think we're going to do it our way. And the Bible said, strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. And he said, isn't there greater rivers than all that of Israel? He said, can I not wash them and be clean? So he turned and went away, what? In rage. Huh? Let me put that in Virginia terms. Who did that preacher think he is? I mean, he's up there telling me that Jesus is the only way. That man's crazy. You know that preacher's up there saying that if you don't trust Christ, you're going to hell. They get mad about it, don't they? They get angry. Well, I had so many people get mad at me for holding church service during COVID-19. I thought, listen, we're all adults here, right? We all know how to, you know, separate our spaces. They got angry. They get mad when I start stepping on their toes. See, they, Naaman thought he could do it his way. You see, he thought sin wouldn't take him that far. He thought, well, I'll just go to another person. Then he thought, I'll just do it my way. You see, he didn't think he had to listen to the man of God who was given by instructions by God. See, man thinks there's always a better way. But better doesn't always make it right. I'm going to use an example. You see, I'm going to tell you, first of all, there's only one way. And the Bible said that's Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Number two, there's only one name. Neither is there salvation in any other name. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's one way and there's one name. But we think there's more to it. You see, we think we're going to do it our way. Listen to me this morning. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's not God's way. God's way is for you to trust Him as your Savior. But you think you're going to do it another way. You see, the easy way or your way may not be the right way. Hmm? Maybe you're here this morning and you're not saved. Maybe you're here this morning and you thought, you know what, preacher, I didn't think that sin would take me this far. Or maybe you're here this morning and you're about midway in that. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, well, I take a drink every once in a while, but I got it. Right? Or maybe you're at the tail end of it going, preacher, I don't know how I got this far. But it took me too far. And maybe you thought to yourself, well, I'll just go to... 
Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, I'll just go and do this program and that program. And you find out it didn't work. And you thought to yourself, I'll just do it the way I want to do it. And it still didn't work. You see, Naaman got to a point in his life, he finally listened to the man of God. He said, all right, I'll do it. And I imagine Naaman was like this. Dip number one, he's like, looks like he's still there. Number two, number three, number four, number five. Number six time, he's probably looking at himself going, it ain't going to work. You know, that's a problem here today again. We always quit short of a blessing, don't we? Well, it didn't work the first time, preacher. Try again. Try again. Try again. Never quit short of a blessing. You think about it. If Naaman had quit when it was the sixth time he dipped himself, would he have been healed from his leprosy? No. But the Bible said seven times. And on that seventh time, the Bible said he was healed. The number seven in the Bible is the number of perfection. You see, there was a woman at the well in John chapter 4. The Bible said that she had five husbands. And she was living with one man. And Jesus said, you've said it right. That one man is not your husband. Five men, she thought would bring her pleasure. Five men, five times being married, she thought it wouldn't take her that far. Five times, listen, she thought she knew it. And that six one she was living with. But we find Jesus was the next man in her life. And he said, if you know who was asking of this water, you would give it. And that was the day she received that seventh man in her life that brought completion. And maybe you're here today and you think, you know what, I, I, I'm almost there. Well, all you have to do is step out in faith and trust Him this morning. That's all you have to do. Edna, come play the piano. If you're here today, you're not saved. You're here today, you don't know Christ as your Savior. You're here today, you said, I've gone through step, step after step after step. Listen, all you got to do is step out. All you have to do is come. The Bible said, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come, let God, let the Lord, let Christ wash you with His blood. Why don't you come? Every head bowed, every eye closed. You come this morning. I want to receive Christ as my Savior. You come. <clears throat>
Listen to the Lord speaking to you this morning. Listen, listen. God ain't done yet. Things are happening. Things are happening. Here we got grown men weeping at the altar. And maybe your heart is hard this morning. Maybe your heart is like a stone this morning. You say, well, I thought it was another way. I didn't think it was going to be this way. I thought I'd do it just fine. Preacher, I thought by being a member of a certain church, but I thought by going to a certain church, but I thought by being a part of a denomination, I thought, you thought wrong. You could join our church every Sunday. It ain't going to get you across the street when you die. It'll send you straight to hell. Hey, because I'm a preacher don't mean I'm going to heaven. Hey, I'm a sinner too. I needed a Savior. If that's you, you come. God dealing with you, you come. One more verse. Edna, play one more verse. And I want this to be your verse. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. You were once was lost, but now you are found it. That's you, you come. Maybe you are saved. You need to rededicate. You come. Oh, you come. Be with. Hey, listen. Maybe you've been away for a long time. Hey, listen. One more verse, Edna. We ain't done yet. Maybe you're like that prodigal. And you thought, well, surely God ain't going to forgive me. Well, surely I've gone too far. All he said was come. He said, he said come as you are. He didn't say go get some things taken care of. He didn't. Did he tell that to the young rich ruler? Go take care of your affairs. No, he didn't. He said, you just come. One more verse, Edna. One more verse. If that's you, you come. Maybe you need to make a decision. You're going to join the church. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But God's dealing with you. Hey, this is the time to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. You come. One more verse, Edna. One more verse. 
God's not done yet. This is it. This is your verse. thought this morning that it wasn't going to be like this. God knows where you're at. God knows where you've been. And God knows where you're going. And God knows the appointed time of where you need to be. And God knows the appointed time of when you're going to stand before Him. The Bible said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's right, Timmy. Timmy knows that. That Jesus Christ is Lord. It ain't the Catholic Church. It ain't speaking in tongues. It's not diving into that baptismal pool. It's you by faith with your whole heart saying, Lord, I'm a no, I'm a sinner. I know if I die without Jesus, I go to hell. Lord, save me and wash me in your blood. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. That means forgiveness. Jesus shed His blood. It ain't this Baptist church that's going to save you. You stand before God, you say, I have my membership role at Calvary Battle Missionary Church. God's going to say, where? What? The Bible said if he sees the blood, you remember the Passover story? Does God see the blood in your life? Does he?